Hi everyone, I'm Morty from Traditional Cooking School here with my dear friend Megan Stevens. Hi Megan. Hi Morty. And we are so excited because Megan, let's do this at the same time. Let's both hold up what we've got. One, two, three. <laughs> yeah, look. Yay. We are holding proof copies of Megan's brand new cookbook. As you might know, Megan from Eat Beautiful, she's already had one book for healing diets, and this one is solely focused on soups and stews, and it's so beautiful. Congratulations, Megan. Thank you. I appreciate it. So the whole title is Eat Beautiful Secrets from a Bone Broth Kitchen, Soups and Stews for Your Wellness Diet, and it has 80 Paleo AIP GAPS, GAPS Intro Keto, and VAD, which is vitamin A detox, correct? Mm -hmm. That's right. Yep. So it has 80 recipes for all those diets, soups and stews. So it's just beautiful. And we're having this little podcast slash interview video chat today to talk about Megan's book. And for those of you who don't know Megan, to get to know her better. Exciting. <laughs> yes. Thank you. And all of the recipes are ancestral or traditional. So you know, even if someone is gluten-free or doesn't recognize one of those recipe um, or categories mm. of a diet, um, this is really meant for a traditional um, cooking audience. Perfect. I'm glad you said that. So let's, um, let's talk about you and your family first, so people who don't know you yet can get to know you a little bit. So let's start with that. Okay, great. Um, so my husband and I have been married about 25 years, and we have three kids. Uh, we're in the process of adopting our fourth. We have an 18-year-old, a 16-year-old, and a 10-year-old. The oldest is a girl and then two boys. And we expect to be adopting um, a daughter who's going to be probably two. Um, I had a lot of antibiotics when I was a kid. And so all of my kids were born with um, autoimmune diseases of one kind or another. And so that launched us into, uh, we were already eating an ancestral diet, but kind of segued us into the GAPS diet, which we did for about six years. And that was about 10 years ago. Um, and after GAPS, we um, segued into some other wellness diets to continue to work and hone on uh, some of the health issues we were continuing to, to deal with. Um, and during that process, some of you are already aware of this, we opened a cafe that was a kefir-based and non-dairy frozen yogurt shop. Everything was made homemade. Um, but during that process is when my health started to deteriorate or show that it was struggling. Um, and so then we started um, and transitioned into a bone broth um, and soup cafe. And so um, that became a big part of our life for about eight years. And then now we've transitioned out of that as we begin to move towards adoption. Um, but that was definitely a big part of our family for, for many, many years. I know it's hard to believe it's been so long, but Megan and I, to tell everybody, we've been friends since college, but we lived in the same area of Oregon at the time because we lived there. And so I just can't believe it's been eight years when you were opening and then expanding to different locations and adding the soups and stews and the, yes. wow, and now you're out of it. Yes, yes. <laughs> it was a lot. It was a lot to own, um, yeah. own a brick, yeah, brick and mortar restaurant. Such a lot of work. Mm -hmm. So would you say, you know, moving on from it has been a, a good chapter in your healing as well, just because of the, yeah. the stress and the work involved? Exactly. Yeah. So I feel like the first three years, they were almost poetry for me. It was just delightful to mix that kefir and to make the bone broth. It was really exciting. Uh, but after a while, it took its toll on our family. It was tiring. The hours were long. Um, and so, yeah, largely for my health, we stepped back just because we needed more downtime as a family at home. Mm -hmm. But you're so gifted with food. And as we've discussed before, uh, Megan and her family, even though they've been on these special diets all these years and experienced all this heating, healing, they're always feasting and eating beautiful, thus eat beautiful. So Megan doesn't do it in her brick and mortar shop anymore. She does it for her blog and her books. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the photography in here is just gorgeous. So I can't wait till we talk about the recipes more. Thank you. So tell us now about the book more specifically. Why did you write it? What's in it? Stuff like that. Sure. Well, while we owned the cafe, I was also teaching Weston A. Price Foundation cooking classes, um, not sponsored by them, but just ancestral or traditional mm -hmm. techniques. 
Um, and so I was meeting a lot of people in the community. Um, and I also started um, a nutritional consulting business at that time because a lot of customers were coming up to me and saying, can you help me? Can you teach me, you know, how to integrate recipes into our home that will support my health? Um, and that became a actually very joyful part of my life to help people one-on-one. -on -one. But we had more and more customers asking for the recipe. So I said, okay, I'll start writing a soup cookbook. Um, but I did not know it would take me three years to write it. And that's how long it took me just because we're still running the business, still homeschooling, still raising our children. Um, so it has to actually taken me three years. But every once in a while, I have customers who, you know, I'll even see in town now and say, where's your soup cookbook? Is it still coming? And I'd say, yes, it's still coming. <laughs> so amazingly, it is actually here now. So that's why I wrote it. I wrote it because people asked for it and I could tell they needed it. And I wanted to be able to provide great soup recipes that were easy and taught some secrets of why, how do you make a great soup? What goes into it? Especially for the wellness diets where people didn't know how to make soups taste amazing. Instead, I mean, when we were first on the GAPS diet, our soups were not delicious. My kids and I were just getting through. Um, and then the second time we went through the GAPS intro diet, I was making these delicious soups. And it was this epiphany of, oh my goodness, I wish I had known that how to do this the first time through. Um, and yeah, it's, the customers at our cafe, I think felt the same way. Like, how do you make your soups taste like this? And I had to learn myself. And so this cookbook teaches those ideas, those principles, as well as actual recipes. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um, I know a lot of you are probably like, ooh, where do I find it? We're going to continue talking about it, but you can actually start reading about it now, but pause the video <laughs> and then come back and pick up where you left off. It's tradcookschool.com slash soups and stews, where soups and stews is all one word. Okay, Megan, now let's talk about who this book is for. Maybe you could talk a little bit about the diets and, you know, just the, the kind of reasons somebody might need to pick this up. Sure. So um, specifically like on the cover and within the cookbook, I've designated the different diets. So paleo, AIP, which is autoimmune protocol, which is a offshoot of the paleo diet to put autoimmune diseases into remission. GAPS, GAPS intro, the ketogenic diet, and then DAD, which you said is the vitamin A detox diet, the newer um, remedial diet. Um, that isn't as well known, but our family is doing that diet right now. So basically how I've done it is there are several recipes that overlap where you could be on any of these diets and make those recipes just really kind of neat. Mm -hmm. And then um, in other cases, if you come to this cookbook and say, hey, I'm on the AIP diet, I, I need just AIP recipes. There's an index in the back that has just the AIP recipes, um, and you can actually, you know, using the e-cookbook, you can just click on the page, it'll link you right to that recipe, um, and those are going to be, you know, very safe and um, designed for that specific diet. The other neat thing about the cookbook is a lot of you, I think, are like me, which is that sometimes you'll do a certain diet for six months, nine months, a year, two years, and then you'll say to yourself, you know what, I've made, I think, all the progress I can make on this diet, and I'd really like to see if this other diet has some benefit for my body. I'd love to try it out. Oh, wait, cool, this recipe book has, you know, recipes for that diet as well. I'm going to just switch over and try the keto diet for six months. Um, it allows you to switch from one diet or, or to another. Um, it allows you to cook for a family that has different dietary needs. And then all of the recipes are truly delicious. So you can even cook for guests out of this cookbook, be on your wellness diet, and they won't know they're eating, you know, healing food. It'll hopefully just taste amazing and they'll love it. So it's really, it's supposed to be very specific, but also meet some broad needs. Mm -hmm. I love, and of course you and I talked about as you were doing the outline and how do I organize this, but I really love the way that you've organized it. You've made it really easy for people to know just at a glance, is this one for me or not? Because anybody who's coming to it, who's like, well, I'm GAPS or GAPS intro. Again, they have the index at the end, but also as you're flipping through the recipes, like under the title of each one, here's this, ooh, this sounds really good. <laughs> Israeli ground lamb stew with lemon and tahini. And it's paleo, GAPS, or keto. So there you go. And just at a glance, and there's beautiful photography, but I just think you've made it really, really usable. So yeah. I appreciate, and I know you spent hours, like, how do I organize this? Because <laughs> we talked sure about it a did. lot. Yeah. Yeah, sure Is there anything else you wanted to add on, um, you know, who's the cookbook for or how um, it's organized? 
No, I think maybe just to clarify that I understand when someone's on a wellness diet, the protocol is very strict. And so I definitely went at this, this cookbook with that in my mind's eye, that this needs to meet the needs of someone who either doesn't necessarily know what the protocol is or is very stringent about the protocol and needs to make sure that I am as well. Yeah. So I was really careful with the details of this cookbook. Um, but then also, I really want this to be for anyone who just needs mm-hmm. convenience in their life, who just wants to learn to make great soup or even a gourmet who's like, I just want to make great soup right. and I'm attracted to this cookbook. Great. I want this to be, you know, you can sit down in a cozy chair and just read it and look at it and enjoy mm-hmm. it. So really hopefully it meets everybody's needs. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Now talk a little bit about the fact that you used the Instant Pot for some recipes and how that fit in. Yeah, sure. And so that's, that's actually, I think we can both agree that's been a gift to me in my kitchen. Um, I used to use a crock pot for all of the years we were in gaps. I used either a, a stock pot on the stove top or a crock pot and it was messy um and so when the instant pot came into my world i just started using it more and more and more so i didn't want people to be limited and have to own an instant pot to use this cookbook so there are maybe 25 instant pot recipes with among the 80. Um, on the other hand, if you love cooking with your instant pot, you'd probably be happy with those 25. <laughs> um, that's actually a lot of recipes. Sure. So, yeah, just personally, I find it so much more convenient. We're always releasing out for basketball practice or a doctor's appointment or something. And to be able to just put things in there and push go, it just makes our life doable and to come home to such a nourishing meal. So I have a category of recipes in the cookbook called dump and cook. And that means you literally just dump everything in there, put on the lid and push, you know, the soups and stews button and go. And, and so there's no sauteing stage. There's no, you know, browning the meat stage. Um, and those recipes are specifically designed to taste great as dump and cook recipes, whereas other recipes need, you know, sauteing or other stages. Um, so yeah, the Instant Pot is there for those of us who really appreciate the convenience. Um, and I should add, as you know, the Instant Pot actually adds a kind of a caramelized flavor to certain recipes. I mean, it does a great job. Sure. So we're not sacrificing on flavor with those. Also, I bought my Instant Pot used for like $35. I'm still using the first one I bought. So if anyone doesn't have an Instant Pot and isn't up for buying one, I just want to encourage you to look on, you know, Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, and it doesn't have to be expensive to get one of those convenience tools in your kitchen. Yep. And I will be sure to include a link to an Instant Pot with this video. So just look with it as well as links to Megan's cookbook. For anybody that doesn't know what an Instant Pot is, it's an electric multi-cooker. And by that, I mean you plug it in and it has all these settings. It has a crock pot setting, pressure cooking settings. It also has programmed buttons, like the soups and stews button that Megan was just talking about, where you set the time, but it has a um, a pre-programmed like temperature and, and pressure level. And not to be scared about that at all. It's very convenient. Like Megan was just saying with dump and cook, you put the lid on, seal it, hit the button and everything's just so quick. So I um, encourage you to check it out if you haven't already. <laughs> it's, mm-hmm. it's a great tool. We have two. <laughs> yeah. And I'm ready for my second one. I want to get the eight quart. I do include in the cookbook some tips on how to use it. So great. those are helpful. And then they're often having sales on Amazon. Yeah. For, yeah less expensive. They are. Yeah. yeah. Well, great. I appreciate that you've worked that in. Okay. So what are your favorite recipes? Um, I actually put in a few bookmarks here when it came in the mail. So um, you have to look through. Personally, I'm a big fan of stew. And so I've, I've dog-eared a couple um, beef short rib recipes. I do personally love that. So there's a couple, there's a beef short ribs with um, a white peach and apple chutney, which this has the most amazing stew base. So even without the chutney, it's just so good. And then if you add the chutney, it's really just becomes beautiful, colorful, great for kids, more for company. It's just special, but still easy. That's one I love. And then there's another one with beef short ribs with a pho. Um, so in that one, I make vegetable noodles and it has really just nice like, tar anise and some really nice spices in the broth that give it a Vietnamese flavor. Um, and for each of these, like we talked about earlier, I adapt them for the different diets. So like the pho spices, they're completely um, exchangeable. So I give like the AIP version, the VAD version, the GAPS version. So if you hear a spice like, oh, I can't have that. Well, you probably can because I've gone in there and for each diet said which spices to use. Nice. So that's a nice one and, you know, very comforting. Let's see what else I have here. 
There's a nice um, breakfast mash stew. Like I definitely try to meet like different flavor profiles. So there's one where there's different sort of sweeter veggies that are smashed up and um, it's served with um, berries and ginger. So that's a nice, um, a nice one. I have here a Japanese udon soup. Um, I worked in a Japanese restaurant as a sushi chef for many years up in Seattle. Actually, not many years. About actually about one year, I think it was many years ago. Um, and during that time, I learned some really traditional um, washis and broths that were used in Japanese cooking. And here, I use um, daikon radish to make. Um, udon noodles and I love this recipe because a lot of people are just used to making zoodles and I'm passionate about daikon radish noodles they're so good and this is a really beautiful recipe you can just use a poached egg on top so um, not for AIP but it's just it's neat the, the variety that that soup offers and um, again super comforting I have a butter chicken which mm. is one of my favorites you open the instant pot and it's just this incredible gravy that's so delicious and then I have one more here that I um, bookmarked, and that's the um, Thai chard bisque. And this is a blender bisque soup made with a ton of fresh ginger, butter, green onions, and green chard, and then meat soccer broth. And it gets pureed, and then I like to drink it out of a mug. It's spicy because of the fresh ginger. It's got a vibrant green, um, and then the butter makes it rich. Um, and then it's just, it tastes healthy, but in a good way. It's, it's just... Um, Again, slightly different than maybe what other people have had. And so when you make it, it's like, oh, what's this? Um, exciting and healthy all at once. So those are a few. I thought that was a good sampling because what really, really stood out to me from it was the variety. It's like, how can you get bored of soups when you, like one you're drinking out of a mug, one is this like butter chicken that has a gravy, another one that's like Vietnamese. You know, when we did gaps and how I was like eating the same thing over and over, this is not that. This right. is variety and feasting. Right. So. Yeah. And I have to say, I'm as tired as anybody else at the end of the day. So sometimes I'll ask my 10 year old to get out the spiralizer and make me the daikon radish noodles. Cause it's the one thing that might break me at the end. Of the day. <laughs> I don't have the energy to spiralize right now, even though it only takes like, you know, seven yeah, right. Right. He like loves that job. So if you have someone else, you can pull in on some of these, it's, the rest yeah. of them are hard, but you know, some take one more step or one less step. So if you need to, you know, pull in that, that kiddo or that, that spouse to help you out. Um, and yeah, there's just a lot of variety for sure. Nice. So again, traditionalcookingschool.com slash soups and stews, where soups and stews is all one word for the e-cookbook package. And I'll provide that link with this video. Also, I'll provide a link to Amazon if you're interested in the hard copy. Okay, Megan, now we're to the point where we're talking about your secrets. Uh -huh. Because in the cookbook, whether you have the hard copy or the e-copy, Megan, like these things are just amazing. She has seven secrets to tell you and we can't give them away, but I'm hoping you'll talk them up, Megan. And I think the idea here is maybe I can say it in terms of like when we did gaps this, and you said when you did gaps the first time, like the soups were just, they got old, like they're greasy or it's like, we have to eat this again. And if you know these secrets Megan's going to talk about and are shared in the book, you don't have that feeling when you're eating soups and stews. So take it away, Megan. Right. Okay, sure. So I'm going to share a little bit about uh, secret number two, which is how to integrate fat into soups. Um, and it's kind of a novel concept and one of the more novel ones, because usually when we think about fat in soup, we think about either, you know, a lot of fat in the soup because you're making short ribs and just it, you know, it melts into the soup. Sure. Or maybe at the saute stage, you're using a tablespoon or two of butter to saute some onions or you know, avocado oil or something. And so there's a little bit of fat. What we're talking about here is a whole other way of using fat to affect the texture and how much a soup satisfies you, as well as to play into the flavor profile of a soup. So we're talking about things that came from the gap side, as well as French cooking, like using chicken skin. We're talking mm -hmm. about using pan drippings. We're talking about using something like schmaltz or bacon fat, even fat, uh, fats like 
roasted sesame oil um, and how to integrate those fats in larger amounts and why. So there's actually a video that correlates to this secret. It's video number one and it comes free with the cookbook. Any version you buy, it comes free. Um, and that's about a 10 minute video where I'm in my home kitchen and I'm actually demonstrating for you how to integrate the fats into soups, and why and which fats. And so we actually kind of build a soup together as I talk about that. And I consider it to be one of the most important soup mm -hmm. secrets that almost nobody does actually. Mm -hmm. Because really the fat can make or break a soup. Like the fat is the creaminess and flavor and smoothness and the whole satisfaction. But if your soup or stew is greasy, it's like, I don't want to eat this. So you really have to get it right. Right, right. And I, I call it that je ne sais quoi, the same that sea salt adds. Like mm. if someone can think they made a great soup and then you taste it and it's missing something, or someone can feel like they really didn't make a great soup, but they don't know why. Well, often it traces back to one of those two things. How have you used salt? Have you used enough? And how have you used the salt? At what stages in the process, as well as the fat? How have you integrated it? How much? Which fat have you used and at what stage? So those two things are so key to making that je ne sais quoi at the end of the soup where you taste it and you're like, oh my goodness, wow. so good. So yeah. Nice. And I've eaten your soup, so I know you know what you're talking about. They're <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> I know I really need to step up my soup game. So <laughs> this cookbook's coming at a good time Thank for you. me. So everyone, not to tease you too much, but the secrets are really worth learning. And Megan expounds on all seven of them, including video for some of them. Um, with the cookbook. So follow the Amazon link to get a hard copy or go to tradcookschool.com slash soups and stews. Soups and stews is all one word for the e-cookbook package. Was there anything else you want to say about the secrets, Megan? Um, no, I think there are the seven core secrets. And maybe if I wanted to add one more thing, it's just that there are more micro secrets like mm -hmm. speckled throughout the whole cookbook and throughout the other videos. So there are seven big ones, but then I definitely found while I was talking in the videos that I was sharing more and more and more. And so I just encourage you to enjoy those videos as well as all the fine print throughout the cookbook where I tried to um, integrate lots more tips. Yeah, right. That's great. Yeah, because you, when you're following somebody's recipe and when they do a good job like you have, you're like learning the technique as you do it and you're like, oh, it often happens to me. Oh, this made, just made it so much better. That's because I did it this way instead of the way I usually do it. And wow, I need to do it this way from now on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So true. Fabulous. Okay. So um, I think the hard copy package is pretty straightforward. It's on Amazon. You can follow a link with this video. It's the hard copy and um, you get two bonus videos. I want you to talk, Megan, now about the e-cookbook package at tradcookschool.com slash soups and stews because um, you've put together a more robust package off your website. So if you would talk about that, what people will get when mm -hmm. they go there and purchase. Sure, you bet. So, um, well, within the cookbook, there are, and the videos, there are additional links. So, um, for example, to printables. So that one of the videos is about herbs. Um, that links to a couple printables, which are just additional material. So one um, teaches which herbs to use for different ethnic dishes. So it gives kind of a grid and equips you for that. Um, another teaches the different nutrition in certain herbs. Um, so those are principles that come with. Nice. Um, and then there are three additional videos that come when you buy the e-cookbook. Um, and so those are three additional recipes. Um, there's a nightshade free mole, which mole has been a favorite of mine for a lot of years, but a lot of people can't do either peppers or tomatoes or some of those um, spices. So I was inspired to share a low inflammation version of mole. So that's one of the recipes. And each of these additional recipes continues to teach and share the um, seven secrets. So that's one of them. One of them is a fall and winter soup, which is just really classic traditional um, seasonal vegetables and herbs that are used throughout fall and winter. Um, and it kind of continues on soup secrets one and two from videos one and two. Um, and then the third is a Zuppa Toscana, which is a really well-loved Italian soup with sausage and greens and potatoes. And I give variations for each diet um, for each of these soups. So 
all of the diets um, can make them, uh, with the exception of the mole and GAPS intro, because there are actually a lot of GAPS intro recipes um, in the cookbook as well. You get those three extra videos, which are, I think, um, you know, a really nice benefit. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, within the cookbook, there's also like a poaching guide, which teaches you how to poach um, meat, seafood, um, eggs, and different kinds of meat um, in bisques and broths. So the poaching guide is a nice bonus, as well as just additional tips about how to freeze and store um, your soups and, um, you know, lots and lots of little um, addendum tips and guides. Um, and those come actually in the back of the cookbook um, with links. So um, the nice thing about the e-cookbook is it does link around so you're able to get navigate within the cookbook really easily like we talked about earlier from the mm -hmm. index or the table of contents, um, but also directly to my website or directly to printables from the e-cookbook. Nice. So to summarize, tradcookschool.com slash soups and stews is where you can get the e-cookbook package. And so it has the e-version of Megan's soups and stews cookbook, and you actually get the PDF and the EPUB, correct? Mm -hmm. So it has all the soups and stews recipes for all those special diets. There's the poaching guide, the seven secrets, and just tips throughout, and the five videos. And so the total package, I just I just want to go over this so all of you can see the value here. But Megan put together those really um, informative and fun videos, plus the two versions of the e-cookbook. So you're actually getting a package that's worth $45, but she's offering you what is it, 55% off for a limited time. So definitely take advantage because really you're getting all of that for just $20. It's a wonderful deal, a wonderful investment to make, especially if you're on a healing diet. But as Megan was saying, like for anybody just to have beautiful soups and stews that you're like, wow, this is incredible. Um, you just won't regret the purchase. Plus you're supporting Megan and her family, which is just a really nice thing to do because Megan <laughs> does beautiful work. <laughs> Thank you. So you will see links with this video to purchase the e-cookbook package on Megan's site. If you do want a hard copy, then follow the link to Amazon to get that. All right. Well, Megan, is there anything else you want to share before we go? I guess just, you know, I put my heart into this for all of the readers. Really, that's that was what was behind this the whole time. Um, so I'm actually even available by email if someone had a question. I mean, this was more than anything, it was written um, as a way to to help people to make more easy, um, more delicious soups than they were making before to help them on their wellness diet. So I'm available to you. Um, that's why I did this. And I hope it will serve people um, as it was intended. I hope it will be beautiful and something you want to snuggle up with, but also something that really serves people's needs. I know it will be. Thank you for pouring your love and three years of all your little snatches of extra time. <laughs> and thank your family too, because boy, of course, they've been feasting, but <laughs> they've tasted a lot of recipes, haven't they? <laughs> yes, yes, for sure. What's, I just want to know, what are you, what's your husband's favorite recipe? Oh, that's a fun question. I'm, I'm surprising you with that one, if you know off the top of your head. I'm like leaping through to try to... What about you one know, of your boys? So, I'm so in touch with what I'm passionate about that I could tell you, like I did earlier, six of my favorites. Yeah, right. Um, hmm. Ooh. Let's see. What about one of the you know, boys? They all love the um the mashes I do. And so like mm -hmm. there's this savory breakfast mash stew with sausages. Um, and so depending on the diet you're on, this one is for all the diets. There are different vegetables that are basically made into what is kind of like a mashed potatoes, but with a bone broth or meat stock base. So mm -hmm. winter squash for gaps, um, sweet potato for AIP, you know, it's different depending on the diet. Um, and then um, it gets served with sauteed onions and fried sausages Yum. and possibly a big dollop of butter on top of the mash. Um, so that's, I mean, that's just classic comfort food. Sure. And I put that in the stew category because you can make the mashed potatoes a little like looser and more stew-like or thick depending on how you want. Either way, we're using a really good fat and bone broth in the base of the mash. Um, you're serving up a big hearty bit of basically meat and mashed potatoes. So. Oh yeah. I can see how that would totally appeal to the guys in your life. Like, yeah. Exactly. They're working hard or throwing baskets hard and they just need just, you know, give me a meal. Yeah, exactly. Yum. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay. I get it. I get it. <laughs> well, thank you for your time, Megan. This has been so fun. And I hope for all of you that have been tuning in, listening to us, that you can benefit from Megan's wonderful work uh, now or in the in the future by getting her cookbook and be sure to keep in touch and let me and Megan know what recipes your family loves. And as Megan said, she's available for questions too. Yes. Thank you, Wardy. This was my pleasure. Thank you, Megan. Bye-bye everyone. God bless you all.